This lesson's on 1.7. Um, it's going to be a two-part lesson. Again, the next two lessons are going to look very similar, but the processes have a slightly different approach. It's important that you understand the material from this lesson so we can wrap everything up, everything else up in section B. Uh, this is a shorter, shorter lesson than section B, but uh, it will at least give you an idea on what's coming up next. The essential question says, what does a distributive property tell me to do? And the keyword is the word distributive. And again, the key word of that is distribute. What the distributive property does is it tells us to distribute the operation to two or more numbers. Um, writing down these next two italicized parts, uh, the distributive property of multiplication is the act of distributing a value to two or more values inside of a parentheses uh, through multiplication. So don't worry about that part, but again, um, the distributive property of multiplication uses parentheses because if you remember parentheses is our way of showing 6 times 3. What we are going to do is instead of taking this 6 times 3 we're going to distribute this 6 to 2 or more numbers. In other words we're going to multiply the 6 to the 3, the 6 to the 5, and the 6 to the 2 if that was the case. But again you're going to distribute it to more than one thing depending on what's there. And again that's how the distributive property is shown. The best way to view the distributive property of multiplication is as a group of friends meeting a random person. Um, typically whenever people meet and there are friends uh, there, then pretty much what happens is you have handshakes that go on. In this case, the best way to view it, again, for those of you who need this type of um, visualization, is that the parentheses shows you who knows each other. So in this case, Max and Tim already know each other and James is, let's say they're at the mall and, and James bumps into him and of course being polite you just say hello to him and so typically you shake hands. So what's going to happen is, and this is how we write it, is that we put parentheses James is meeting Max. So the, what, what this means is that James is going to meet Max, again they're in parentheses, and so plus sign James is also going to meet Tim. And so this is what the distributive property looks like. You take the person on the outside and you make them meet both people by simply taking, connecting them using parentheses and using the plus sign to connect the two. Here we have Bree meeting Pat, Kim, and Trish. Again, two or more things can be inside this parentheses, but because of the parentheses, it means that these three people know each other already, which means that, and I might run out of room, hopefully you don't, that Bree is going to meet Pat and again it helps to kind of draw that arrow and Bree is going to meet Kim and as your last part Bree is going to meet Trish so again the general idea of the distributive property has no algebraic uh, idea behind it and again you can kind of visualize it with that so again Brie meets Pat and Brie meets Kim and Brie meets Trish as long as you understand that you have the base idea of what you need to be able to do uh, the only thing is that you are going to be working with terms containing containing variables and so we have to make sure we know how to multiply them appropriately so some multiplication examples just to show you again it says that whenever you're multiplying with terms containing variables you multiply the numbers and you add the variables. What that means is you now have to start sectioning off your question or your problem into parts that you can actually work with. For example, you're going to take 5 times 8 and make 40. And then you're going to say that in this multiplication there is only 1x, so we leave 1x. Again, add your variables. There's 1x, so we put down 1x. Here, from what we know, a negative 4 times a 9, there's one negative, which means it's negative, so it's even more things. This is actually broken down into three parts. The negative makes it negative. 4 times 9 makes 36. There is one y, which has to come down with it. Again, everything is going to start to get a little more complex, but you just need to slow down and make sure you think your way through it, and then eventually you get better. The next one has 1, 2 negatives, which means it's going to be positive. 3 times 6 is 18, but notice we have 1, 2 t's, so what we put is t squared, because remember t squared means t times t, which is what we have right there. All right. And then the last one is the tricky one. The 1 negative makes it negative. 8 times 2 turns into 16, but do not put hg. Typically in algebra what you want to do is if you have more than one variable in a um, term, 
you want to alphabetize them so you do not get lost as to what is what. And we have one G and one H which goes there. All right. So again, G H would be what you want to type because G is the letter that would go first if it was alphabetized, and it would um, keep things in that order. To wrap up the lesson, what we're going to do is put all these parts together. Uh, be sure to take good notes and ask about anything that is still not understood. Uh, I am at the desk again for 30 minutes as I keep telling people who are making excuses as to why they're not getting assistance. I'm sitting there waiting for you. Please come and use my time so that I can help you out. The best way to perform the distributive property is to slow down and allow the numbers to do all of the work. That is the two words I had had you set up for your notes. But just slow down. Like I said, the issue is not that people don't get the distributive property right. The issue is that people want to do finish the problem in you know 10 seconds, and so they try to do it in their head, and they end up messing up. So when I say slow down, it means that I am going to show every step. But as you practice showing every step, eventually you don't need to show every step, but you have to practice to get to that point. So on this example, we have negative 3 times 4x minus 7. Again, these two are the friends, and how you write it is very important. Again, we are going to use a plus sign. We're going to use parentheses to show the meetings. We're going to put a negative 3 meets 4x because that is the first two terms that meet. We are going to use a plus sign because, again, that makes sure that I know I am saying and. So negative 3 meets 4x and negative 3 meets negative 7. Now, most of the issues are going to come in when you don't use a plus sign and you put a minus sign here and you forget that that 3 is negative and then it throws off your multiplication. But now what we want to do is simplify those parts because, remember, I told you the distributive property really isn't about algebra. It's just the meetings themselves. Now we are going to simplify it because we can. This is 1 negative, which makes it negative. 3 times 4 is 12 with 1x. Negative 3, negative 7 make a positive 21. And that is as far as we can go because what you're going to learn is that you cannot add a x term with a non-x term. You can't go any further than that. Do not make that uh, 9x. That's as far as you can go. You cannot put a x with a non-x. Distributive property also includes negatives. This is a negative sign, and what's going to happen is this negative is going to meet 4m squared, and this negative is going to meet 3m, and this negative is going to meet negative 6. Make sure you can see that. Again, the negative is going to meet 4m squared, and the negative is going to meet 3m, and the negative is going to meet negative 6. Now, what does a negative do? Remember that negative means opposite of it means it's simply going to change the sign so it becomes negative 4m squared minus 3m because there's only one negative there but if you notice here you've got one here and one there which makes plus 6 in other words all this does if you want to skip that step excuse me sorry I had to cough if you want to skip that step Typically what you'll do is you will simply switch that over. Notice 4m was positive, we made it negative. 3m was positive, we made it negative. 6 was negative, we made it positive. And that was that. And then, uh, one second again. And the last one, last two have uh, decimals and fractions. They should not be an issue because you are allowed to use calculators on your work. So please make sure you take your time. Again, especially if you show your listings like you're supposed to. In this case, 1 fourth meets negative 48 and 1 fourth meets 12x. And so if you don't know what it is, you simply take 1 fourth, type it in using your N over D button. And again, I think I told you to make sure you knew how to do that. But 1 fourth meets negative 48. So 1 fourth times negative 48 is negative 12. And then 1 fourth times 12x. Again, we don't care about the x. We do 1 fourth times 12, which gives me 3. So it will be plus, because that's going to be positive, 3. And don't forget that there's an x there. The trick with the fractions and the decimals is that you get so caught up worrying about what the fraction is doing that you forget to put an X on there and then you get messed up because then you actually have to add the 12 and 3 and everything gets you know kind of crazy from there so don't forget while you are finding out what the answer is to your multiplication that you need to make sure you are also thinking about the variable the negative and all the other stuff that's going on just like on this last one 0 0.4 meets 12a and 0 0.4 meets negative 
4.3. So we do 0 0.4 times 12, which gives me 4.8. So again, that's a 4.8a because there's an a there. And then here's the part you got to be careful on. 0 0.4 meets negative 4.3. So negative 4.3, which gives us negative 1.72. And that is your stopping point. Again, you cannot put a term with a variable together with a term that does not have a variable. Final thought on this is that the distributive property of multiplication is extremely important to your algebra success. If you practice it correctly, you'll eventually be able to work your uh, steps out in your head, some of them at least. Uh, if you attempt to skip them in the early phase, you're going to make a lot of small mistakes. Just be patient, and again, you're going to get better with time. So um, be careful with this. Get the most out of it that you can, and good luck.